The prevalence of pancreas diseases, including pancreatic cancer, is on the rise. Annually, there are around 50,000 cases of pancreatic cancer in the United States. By 2025, pancreatic cancer is expected to be the second leading cause of cancer-related death. Yale School of Medicine and Yale New Haven Hospital have formed a multidisciplinary center to address this growing burden of disease. The Yale Center for Pancreatic Disease is a center with a group of physicians, including gastroenterologists, interventional endoscopists, pancreatic surgeons, medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, and radiologists, and pathologists as well as a variety of other health providers, including advanced uh, nurse practitioners, uh, nutritionists and pain management, all interested and expert, as well as experienced, in the diagnosis and management of a variety of pancreatic diseases. The most important part of our integration as a team is our multidisciplinary tumor board conference, which happens on a weekly basis. We review each patient's uh, records and uh, together as a team devise the best treatment plan for each patient. The center has a robust early screening program for patients identified as being at high risk of developing pancreatic cancer. Patients who either have a very strong family history of pancreatic cancer and or have a gene mutation which puts them at risk for possibly developing pancreatic cancer. Our team is very active in looking at patients who have pancreatic cysts because we know that people with pancreatic cysts may go on and develop pancreatic cancer. Epidemiology researchers at Yale have identified further factors to suggest people who should be screened for pancreatic cancer. People who find it easy to quit smoking in middle life, people who are losing weight unintentionally, people who've been recently diagnosed with diabetes, people who have had repeated episodes of pancreatitis, and people who start using proton pump inhibitor medications for heartburn. Any one of these by itself is not enough to point to pancreatic cancer, but two or more of them occurring in close proximity suggests that the pancreatic cancer might be an underlying concern, and even though the majority of even those people will not be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, enough of them will be that it makes screening among them a potentially life-saving procedure to do. Many other cutting-edge technologies are available at the Yale Center for Pancreatic Diseases, including endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, or ERCP. It's useful in the diagnosis as well as palliation of pancreatic cancer. Patients with pancreatitis often undergo ERCP to try and understand the reason for the pancreatitis and also treat the underlying problems that may have caused pancreatitis, such as a congenital abnormality, pancreatic duct stones, strictures of the pancreatic duct. ERCP is also useful for diagnosing pre-malignant conditions of the pancreas. Another useful diagnostic and therapeutic tool is endoscopic ultrasound. In addition to improvements in the diagnostic capabilities of endoscopic ultrasound, fine needle aspiration, fine needle biopsy where we can get larger samples, advancements in molecular studies that help us define the nature of cystic and solid lesions of the pancreas. We're hopeful that in the near future, endoscopic ultrasound will play more of a therapeutic role in not only uh, getting diagnostic samples, but those uh, same techniques to access uh, the pancreas could potentially provide uh, therapeutic options. There is a focus on personalized precision medicine. During the course of their treatment, the majority of patients will have a biopsy and their tumor's DNA will be analyzed for gene mutation. Pancreatic cancer, we know that there are uh, quite a few mutations in a certain gene pathway called RAS. So that's 95% of pancreatic cancer. But occasionally we find things such as RAF mutations, other kinds of mutations that have drugs for them. We're very interested in the field of immuno-oncology or applying immunotherapy to cancer therapeutics. We found that tumor turns off the normal immune reaction that should be fighting the cancer. Some of these newer drugs that are interfering with molecules called CTLA-4 or PD-1, they're antibodies that block the interaction that allow the immune system to kill the cancer. We actually looked at an active chemotherapy regimen that 
has been used in the treatment of metastatic disease more recently as initial treatment for patients with locally advanced pancreas cancer. So the idea is that the fulfirinox will do two things. It will shrink the tumor in the pancreas and pull it off the blood vessels so that the surgeon may be able to operate and at the same time be effective in eradicating any what we call micrometastatic disease that is not visible on scans but ultimately may be a threat to the patient. In trials, more than 40% of patients who received this treatment went on to have surgery. The survival of this group of patients exceeded 26 months, longer than anything previously reported. Yale New Haven Hospital pancreatic surgeons perform the largest number of pancreatic surgeries in the state of Connecticut and use the most advanced surgical techniques, including laparoscopic and robotic-assisted pancreatic surgery. Another promising pancreatic cancer therapy uses the protein renalese. This protein is made in the kidney cells and secreted into the blood. It protects cells from dying. Several cancers, including pancreatic cancer, melanoma, breast cancer, and bladder cancer, increase the level of renalase in the tissue, and that allows them to survive. We've delineated the pathway that renalase uses to signal to cells and, and keep them alive. And then we've developed uh, methods of blocking that pathway in an attempt to treat cancer. We found that uh, if we make a uh, sort of blocker called monoclonal antibodies, many of them being used now, or specific drugs, if we can block the renalase pathway, we can actually kill cancer cells. And we've demonstrated that both in, in tissue culture, in cell culture, and in animal models. In pancreatitis, giving renalase acutely when the, the damage happens is very effective in reducing the inflammation. So in pancreatitis, you'd want to give renalase. In pancreatic cancer, you'd want to block it. Researchers at the Yale Center for Pancreatic Diseases have identified the role smoking plays in the development of pancreatitis. It seems like a very specific component of cigarette smoke. It's a metabolite of nicotine is the responsible factor for causing pancreatitis. And this metabolism or conversion of nicotine occurs in a cigarette when it's heated, but some can also occur in the body. And what we found out, it works in a very, very specific pathway. It works on a special kind of receptor, uh, which, which binds the, um, the nicotine uh, metabolite. And that initiates a signaling pathway that's very damaging uh, to, the, uh, to the pancreas. Our philosophy is that the proper approach to the management of pancreatic disease is through a multidisciplinary approach. There certainly has been increasing evidence for this uh, in the management of pancreatic disease. We have a very close collegial working relationship with our colleagues here in the Yale Center for Pancreatic Diseases. And by having weekly meetings to discuss complicated and complex patients from both a diagnostic as well as a therapeutic perspective, we truly believe that we are improving their overall outcome and their care.